Oh, no. I'm on a mission. I want to be the ultimate bike commuter. And if you've ever seen Casually Explained's video on cycling, you'll know exactly who I'm talking about. This is my bike. It's a 2014 KHS 650-600. 650 because of the wheel size, 600 for I have absolutely no idea. Pretty nice standard mountain bike. It's seen some use. Got a couple dings on my pedals. I only ever ride with flats in case I need to bail off. It's happened. The first time I ever went mountain biking, I got a large scar on my shoulder because I flipped over the handlebars trying to avoid a car on our way back. Yeah. I'm really glad I have hydraulic disc brakes. But as you can tell, this is a mountain bike. And until I moved to Portland, I didn't use it a whole lot on the street. One of my first changes was putting these commuter tires on for a smoother ride. This seat, on the other hand, is massively uncomfortable and I should have changed it out long ago. It's just... It's just not great. This is everything I'm looking to add to the bike. Well, I've already changed out the pedals, as you saw. These are clipless, I don't like those. First and foremost, we have a seat. Fenders because it rains a lot here. Horn because there's tons of cars and no one looks for you. A mount for the horn. A bell, so I'm not beeping at pedestrians. More comfortable grips. Headlight, tail light, little post to put everything on up front. Mount for the flashlight. Grips for this post. Cell phone holder so I can navigate. A rack. And some panniers. I think they're pronounced panniers. Panniers? Sounds like beignet. I could really use some donuts right now. That's everything. So now, let's put that on. Where to start? I think it's only sensible that we first start with this guy. He's caused me so much pain over the years. Really looking forward to this being gone. Oh, come on. Why is this possible? Nope. Can't think of a more comfortable way to ride a bike than this. Oh my gosh. It's like a playground slide. This is just awful. Ugh. Enough of that nonsense. All right, I'll adjust the specific angle later. Oh my gosh. This is great. I feel like I'm on cloud nine. Next. I don't know. There's so much to put on. Why don't we start with the difficult part, which is gonna be the rack. This rack's a little bit too wide for my bike, but that's not a problem because I asked a local shop for a fat tire skewer. Uh-oh, don't lose the spring. Now you can see the difference. Quite a bit more length to hold that rack on. All right, now the tricky part. Oh yeah, I got these spacers. It's just a plastic standoff and a metal sleeve. Angle the caliper. And final twist. Oh, too much. Ta-da! Mesmerizing. Oh! Oh! <laughs> okay. 
Okay, seriously? It's a completely different link this time. Oh, that's why. User error. As it usually is. All right. That's not going anywhere. Let's get all this stuff out of there. Oh, no. Don't. Oh, uh, where'd it go? A little bit of grease so they don't seize. I kid you not, this smells like strawberry Jolly Ranchers. Maybe watermelon? Why does it smell like candy? I feel like I'm the college humor version of the Tide CEO. I'm gonna fire every single one of these people. I want a chapstick with this flavor. I don't know what in it would smell like this. There's even a label on the back that says, don't eat me, I'm not edible. This is a lawsuit waiting to happen. Who is your supplier? I've got, well, not beef with them. This isn't tested on animals, but. I have plants with them. I don't know why you would test bite grease on animals, come to think of it. Maybe cheetahs can run faster with it. It's like glucosamine for them. I don't know. Don't ask me, I'm not a biologist. That's why I work on things with gears. Or motors or electronics or metal. Stuff that I can't really hurt. All right. Solid. Solid. <laughs> Don't make the guy who looks at bike grease labels angry. Next, we're gonna do the fenders. Where's that other part? I'm missing crucial stock. All right, that fits there. Oh, that's so cool. This is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. You gotta see this. The engineering is honestly incredible. These two pieces mesh together like that. And then as they're pushed together, the tabs splay out, widening the diameter. So it can lock into my fork. And then you've got this little ratchet system that holds on the fender. I mean, it's just, it's just great. Really well designed. But we're not gonna do any of that. Get out of here. Order of operations to be determined. Got these washers. These don't cross thread. You know, this would probably be easier if I took the front wheel off. Mm. Gotcha. Why am I such a perfectionist at times like this? That's not going anywhere. Now, if you do have hydraulic calipers and you're taking the wheel out, don't hit the brakes. You can have issues with them locking up and making it difficult to open them up again. Just get the disc in before you hit the lever again. Eh, it's only scraping like every revolution. It'll be fine. Now for the rear fender. This one's a bit easier to get on. You just got this clip mechanism, but as you can see with the front, I want to avoid it getting stolen. So I got this pipe clamp. I know, real elegant solution. Wrap it around there. Why do they use flatheads? Why is it making that clicking noise? Well, that's probably not good. Is that aligned right? Yeah, it'll do. I love this game. See how strong you can torque the screw before you give yourself a big gash on your thumb. If they take that, I think they want it more than I do. Let's do some grips next. This isn't actually even the right size wrench, but it's working. Yoink. Well, apparently I'm missing a screw from this grip. Dang it. Oh, that's toast anyway. Zoop. My front brake feels spongy. What did I do to it? I think the right one's lower than the left. Or is the left one higher than the right? We'll test there. Oh, I gotta get these guys. Yeah, it's got a hinge on the back. A rubber strip to keep it in place. Please don't cross thread. I feel like I'm turning my bike into a minotaur. It's got these horns. He's kind of, I don't know, flame shooting out of its forehead. Fear me, all ye dungeon crawlers, for I protect the treasure of better cardiovascular health. It's the most important gift I can give, aside from maybe a plus two magic sword. 
But that's mine, I tell you. Get away from it. Fight me. Those don't look even at all. Tube! Now, I've heard these scratch easily if you just slide them right through. Liars! What a waste of time that would have been. Think of the savings I just achieved. Like people who cut across six lanes of traffic. People want to talk to me again? Who has time to talk when you have to improve your bike accessories? I think I'm gonna break these. The tabs are like that underneath the main body. Oh well. Now for the cell phone holder. Where's that screwdriver? I don't wanna snap the plastic, but I really don't wanna lose my phone. Speaking of, where is my phone? Noise. Next, let's add the bell. Uh-oh. Where'd the screw go? Why am I always losing these? Aha! I was hoping it didn't fall down the hole. Am I cross threading? No, aha, finally not. Next comes the headlight. Click, click. How bright can it go? And finally, the horn. Like that, maybe? Maybe the other way. Like that. Better. Earthquake. Like a glove. And the button. I thought this was a good idea. Oh God. Oh, it works. It's like a car horn. My ears are ringing. But the problem is still this button. I mean, this is not gonna do anything. I can't, I can't even reach it easily with, well, there, but in an emergency, I'm not gonna be able to. I'm gonna unplug that. In an emergency, I'm not gonna be able to just, you know, reach over like I'm gonna be grabbing the brakes. Usually. Can't go around here because of the shifter and brake mounts. All right, there's the first custom part I'm gonna need. Something that fits over this. Useless cat toy. Okay, seriously, how many tabs did they need with this tail light? On the back, it's got a holder for this piece, like that. And then you slide it into here, you've got this little T-mount. And then you gotta bolt that onto the bike. Which would be fine if all of that work left you with a light that still couldn't be taken off. Mm. Okay, maybe it's harder than it looks. Still couldn't be taken off like that. Oh. Custom part number two. Oh yeah, this is how I ultimately sell the look. Bags. This is huge. Man, you could ride cross country with this thing. Now get out of my way. I gotta go make stuff. And for dramatic effect, whoosh. Got our tail light, nut and bolt and some washers from the hardware store, scented bike grease because the smell is intoxicating, a bucket of tools, and of course a bicycle. Let's see, what will we need? Sharpie, probably. Maybe a drill, a knife. Ah! It's like a magician's sleeve. Come on. 
that. Next, I'll drill a hole through this tab and that'll hold the light in place because as you can see, can't get it out. It's locked in place, you have to break this off otherwise. I just realized I should probably take it off to drill the hole. Why me? You know what, I'm not gonna take it off. What's life without a little risk? Ow! Don't leave your pointed scraping tools in the open. Oh, it's off center. Oh, wait, if it's off center, it's totally not gonna go. Uh, this is bad. Let's try it anyway. Why did I buy two washers? Oh, probably spacing. That's why. It's spacing. It's gotta be spacing. I know it's spacing. Ah! Oh, I hate flatheads. Oh, it's spinning the nut there. I need to grab it. You know, it's almost more of a safety feature to not be able to screw or unscrew it. Or maybe now they're just gonna go and break it. Please don't break the light off my bike. There. Good enough. I think this just gets the battery door open. Yeah. The Grateful Red. Cool name. That solves the tail light issue. Now what am I gonna do about that horn button? Oh yeah! That was loud. Clean up a bit. Perfect. Where are they? Aha! Form cards. I've never actually used these before, but I was gifted them a couple years ago and always curious what I could do with them. These cards will soften up in a cup of boiling water. So the plan for the time being is take one of these cards, this one, and make it pliable, stick it where I think the button should go, try to kind of craft a housing, bend it into place, and get the rough shape, take some measurements from it, 3D model a part that I could 3D print, and then screw that on with properly placed holes and everything, and then I can just reuse this later on. We'll see how it goes. The last time I used something like this, it was for some earplugs, and you did the same thing where you heated them up and then you stuck them in your ear. It's kind of like what, if you ever played football, same thing as making a mouth guard. I think this is gonna be a little bit more fun than cutting all my gums on hot plastic. I think. I can't say for certain. Who am I kidding? I love doing this stuff. How to use a form card. Boil the water, drop a form card into the water. When it is fully melted, carefully remove it with a spoon. Caution, hot. It can now be molded into any shape. Okay, good enough for me. Jesus, rollerblading Christ, that's good. I think I might have left it in too long. Maybe I shouldn't have made tea in the middle of my video. Yeah, definitely left it in too long. Oh, I also forgot to take this off. It's really hot. Get out of here. Something like that. Get the impressions of the screws. Now how about we just go like this. 
Oh, this is not good. I don't want to stick the plastic together. No, it's not what I intended. Uh oh, it's solidifying. Yeah, this is an absolute mess. That's not bad. Now I just gotta hold it in this position. Such an interesting texture. It feels like, like leathery. Pull that off. And there we go. There's a little crease between. You can tell where the screws are. And got a general form for the shape. I'm satisfied with these form cards. Really useful for creating a quick prototype of something. Now, now I gotta clean up. I have some blurry photos, as well as these crude drawings of the bike part and the button casing to attempt to CAD this thing with. I will be astounded if this works well. I have the side view photo to give me a little bit of the profile. I also have the interior photo to show me where the screws are, as well as to show me the dividing line between the two halves. And here's my attempt at recreating the piece if it was actually done properly. Time to go to the 3D printer. Oh boy, yoink. Let's see how accurate I was. I mean, check these out. Pretty good. Kind of line up. I mean, I just added the holes. I got high hopes. I forgot one thing. This little ridge right here. I didn't put a cutout. First try and I get that close. Awesome. Now I just need a Dremel. Oh, wait, I should probably mark it first. He's kind of melting this more than cutting it. Power! Oh, what am I doing? I have a much better tool for this. What am I doing? Ah, oh, this one's all busted up. Let's use that. Much better. And now I know I. Ooh, that's hot. Oh no, I cut through one of the holes. That's bad. Although I should probably test fit this. Oh, I should have done that earlier. Oh my gosh. Does it fit? Ah! Oh, wait. Let's try screwing the button to it. Oh, I think I filled that up with molten plastic. Now just by compression and hope these screws are working. They're not actually perfectly straight, but plastic is forgiving. Cool. Fits the button. But what about where it matters? The, the angle's right, I just need to extend this face to the bottom of here. Oh, that's awesome. That's so awesome. Ah, I love it. Fit the first time. Well, almost the first time. There was a fair bit of dremeling. But I'll just hot glue it for now. Where's my wrench? Still has pressure. Good. Didn't break it. I really hope I didn't speak too soon on that one. Caution, hot will burn flesh. This hot glue gun's made of plastic, but I gotta tell you, it's pretty metal. <laughs> nice. Let's test ride it. Maybe I should honk it first. It's gonna be loud. I'm in a closed garage. Ah, perfect. Feel like an air traffic controller or one of the guys on the ground. That way, that way. Ah, oh, you can't do that with a plane. Don't listen to me on air traffic control.
Oh, got it. Hope you enjoyed watching me trick out my bike. I love this thing. I'm so ready for years of commuting with it. I think bike commuting is a great way to get around cities like Portland really fast. I can beat cars going through most of the city. Traffic, public transit, stop signs, train tracks, you name it, I can go faster than the cars can. I can even ride down stairs if I want to. Just disengage the lock on my fork and I'm good to go. It's a lot of fun. I think the world could really use a lot more bike commuters, especially for environmental reasons. It's relaxing at times, it's exciting at times, thrill ride at times, but no matter what, it's always really fun for me. If you haven't tried bike commuting yet and you've been thinking about doing so, give it a go. Try it for a week, see what you think. If you're on the fence, I think it'll really change your mind. That's all for now. Time to ride off into the sunset. Please consider subscribing for more projects, and most importantly, thank you for watching. I'm off! Oh. Cards that come in these. Woo! There you go. I will play with you after this. I'm trying to film this in a day. I know, I know, I know. Oh boy. My father's South African, so I almost exclusively drink rooibos tea. I love it. Honey, milk, or half and half. It's close enough. I'm 50% correct. It's a 2014 KHS. <laughs> that dog has perfect comedic timing. What year is it? Huh? Marty? It's really not great. Oh, God. Very inconvenient place to put my bike. Whoa! Ow! 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 Ah! So hot! Mm. Oh. <coughs> there is a bee in here somewhere, and I can't find it. Where'd you go, bee? This is my version of Dude Perfect right here. Gotta visualize and attack. Visualize and attack. Visualize and attack. Man, I'm trying to ride a bike. What's with all these planes? I'm trying to make a video here. Can you stop, please, just for like five minutes? It'd be great. Thank you. Clearly I need practice. Can't feel the buttons with these gloves. It's always time to party. Man, Casey Neistat really knows what he's doing with these glasses. I'm looking over at the screen. Now you can't tell. Now I am? Now you can't tell. Brilliant, I tell you! Thanks for the tip, buddy.